Bye bye. There you go. Let's get more sound. Righto, welcome back to Four Wheel Drive Podcast, driven by Shelter Music by the Southern River Band, Let It Ride. On socials, we are the Four Wheel Drive Podcast on Instagram. Flick us a message, YouTube, all our episodes over on Backchat. And thank you for your support on Patreon too. Really exciting stuff going on there. If you feel like supporting us, head over to patreon.com forward slash the Four Wheel Drive Podcast. We've now, got five now. We've got five. And 100. that was the cleanest <laughs> intro I've done in a long time too, was, by the way. That was good. So that was, that was slick. Clean. There's no... Um, yeah, no hiccups like the last couple. Yeah, proud of you, But yeah, five, five Patreons, so we're, we're still growing. We're growing, we're, we're getting the there. That's all we can ask, and we appreciate the support. So if you do want to help out, jump over to uh, to the link that I just mentioned. Um, how are we, fellas? Good. How are you? Good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm getting into the groove of things now. It's sort of, it's March, where so it's all, you know, settled into the year a little bit more, so it's yep. just, um, it's all guns blazing. On the platform, ready to launch? That's what they, they may say. I, um, I would like to think that we're about to launch in all aspects of my life, um, day job and this job. Um, and I think good things are around the corner, mate. Yeah, it's all happening. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Don't mark my words, but <laughs> I'm <laughs> no, excited. Well, that's it now, mate. <laughs> it's an exciting year. Like it's a, it's a big know. year. It's a big year. We're, we're about... We're f- out of the garage. We're in a new studio. New We've got Patreons. We're, it, it, actually, there's a lot going on. It's quite hard to handle. We, we might be getting a cool thing. It's B B B season as well. It's B season. It's B season. It's B season. That's that's what Ronnie's bringing. <laughs> it's B season. Let's <laughs> skip over the cool thing. Yeah, but what's the cool? What's, the cool, what's the cool thing? No, you boys know what the cool thing is. We've we're doing this all too often at the moment. Where two two of us, so only one of us know what's going on right now. <laughs> two of us. But last week, um, last it was week two it was of us. Just you that was out of the loop. Yeah, it was. Yeah, two two of us. I'm out of the loop. I'm out of the loop too. I don't know what the cool thing is. That's right. You guys don't need we'll to know what out. the cool thing is. Only I need to know what the cool thing is. I've got a cool thing for you though that I do know about and we all know about. And what the aircon behind me? Yeah, that is nice and cool. <laughs> do you need to turn that off? Actually, are we hearing that? Nah, nah. We'll do good. some. We'll do some editing magic. Some magic. Magic. Yeah. magic stuff goes on in this studio. Yeah. Shout out, Damo. Right, oh, on the radar, our latest probably segment that we've added to the show. Really exciting topic uh, this week on the radar. It's one of our good friends who we've spoken about plenty of times on the podcast. He's been a, a friend of the show. He's been on in in some capacity, um, not as a sit down guest, but as a as a uh, I suppose a chilly spectator, <laughs> yeah. if you can call it that, <laughs> on the road. And uh, our great friend Rafa at Destination Four Wheel Drive has a new bin bag out. Now, we've all had a look. We got a little bit of an early release uh, through Rafa, but um, it's a really, really good image. Now, one thing that I get excited by is a bin bag. All my good mates know this. I love bin bags that hang off the back of cars, and I especially love the ones that sit on the back wheel of a Troopy or a 76 or you know back tyres. Um, yeah, they do more than hold rubbish. That's the thing, right? Yes, well, there's so many purposes for them, but... Um, if I can run through a few things of, of Rafa's new uh, new bag here, the, the, well, I've, before I touch on any of the details, the exciting part is so it's your standard bin bag, Ronnie, and you, you've seen this, so jump in if I don't explain it that well. Standard bin bag, but it's got two little saddle bags connected on the side on the side as well, and a divider in the middle. Yeah, and uh, he had something else that he was playing around with on top. I'm not sure if that's part of the final product, but right, yeah, yeah. So like he's like his awning, it's a, a obviously a really quality product. He tries and tested it so much to get it to this thing and um, there was a bit of feedback even before he sort of finished the design on stuff that we would like and, and all of that or my, me personally. Um, oh. I, I don't have a lot for him a lot of yeah. time but it was nice to be involved in that process. Um, but a, a pretty exciting product. So like his, like his awning, we've all seen that. There was people... Left, right and centre asking where you got your awning from and we were yeah. sending them around a raffer all day. So he's got a bin bag out with these two new saddlebags, which is something that I've never seen before. Yeah, but the other cool thing about the main part of this bin bag, it opens from the bottom. Yes. So yeah. you don't have to reach in and grab the bag because what happens is at camp, everyone uses your bin bag. Yeah. Not everyone's careful with where the bag is. So yep. they'll shove stuff in and then all of a sudden your bag's at the bottom, you know, the, the rubbish yeah, bag that's yeah. inside the bag yep. and everything goes on top yes. and then you've got to pull this mess that out. That is a real pain. Yeah. yeah. So quickly on the, on the, uh, the detail, so it's a 42 litre um, bag, obviously the two detachable saddle bags, they have a 12 and a half litre capacity. They are obviously detachable, um, like it says, so you can... You recovery know, gear? Recovery gear or you can just, you can grab that off take it wherever you're going. You can fill it up with beers if you want to, whatever it is. Um, Tall throw, paper, throw a few. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that's probably got its own section. Um, 
but it, it, so many different uh, purposes. PVC interior design, so that's to hold shape. Waterproof, UV resistant. So it's a 33 or a 35 inch tire. So it's 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 made for four wheel driving with blokes that and and females that have the the bigger tires on the back. Who like to tinker with the cars? Yeah. Yeah. That. <laughs> um, but all the space you could ask for. It's it's quite big. Um, it looks quite big on the back, but like I say, it's a quality product and and uh, the quality of man that Rafa is. Um, you'd be happy to support a bloke like that uh, in his endeavours and, and know that it's tried and tested. And, and made in really Cairns, cool. made in Australia. Yes, that's <clears> it. <throat> he is Venezuelan. Yes. But made in Australia and he is very passionate about Australia. Yeah. I love it. He's, he's learning the slang. <laughs> he's very thankful to be here. He's very, uh, one of the best blokes you can ever meet. Ge- yeah. Genuinely. Genuine, genuine, genuine nice guy. Nice guy, and yeah. So that's the yeah. best analogy. Yeah. Genuine description. Yeah. Genuine yeah. bloke. So go over to Destination 4-Wheel Drive. Check out that. That is a new uh, quality product that's on the radar. Just be careful if you're travelling with him, though. You will have to pull <laughs> yeah. over frequently <laughs> that is. to splash your boots. Don't <laughs> to yeah. splash your boots. I mean, in fairness, whenever you have to stop, it'll be absolutely hilarious because he's got all these um, slang terms for going to the bathroom yeah. now. Yes. He's learning some of the Aussie slang. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the video he sent us the other day. Very cool. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Very good, Rafa. That, that Shout was, out, mate. Well done. He's done well to remember a lot of the things we told him. Yeah. Um, actually, English is not easy. No, no, it's not. No. It can mean As so you can attest things. to from your last week intro, mate. <laughs> the last few <laughs> intros have been shocking. But no, it is, it's a hard language to, to pick up, no doubt. When, when you hear uh, someone speak about it, that's, it's not their first language, the different details and little intricacies that we don't think twice about anymore Oh, well, I mean, Ronnie, you, you've got another language up your sleeve, don't you? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, well, look, I think English probably is my first language, but then I had to unlearn it at right. the age of nine and then relearn English yep. when I came back. So Danish is the other language. Yeah, Danish, yep. yeah. Is yeah. there any crossover whatsoever with English? Oh, there's some interesting crossover, but uh, it's, it's more to do with the days of the week, but it's more uh. of like a... Um, they're named after some of the Viking gods, actually. Right. That Monday and Wednesday and Thursday. Oh, really? And then there's some Greek gods in there as well. That's like Saturday, yeah, Saturn. Ah. Um, yeah. But anyway, that's getting a bit off topic. Oh, but, right. But yeah, there's, there is a bit of crossover. It's um, on the radar. Yeah. There's a bit of crossover. <laughs> it's on the radar. It's all good. <laughs> we'll be taking language classes yeah. next week. <laughs> to le- learn a new language. Um, Mate, speaking about hard things, <clears throat> you've taken apart your car. Yeah, I have. Oh, yeah, yeah. I yeah. have. I haven't taken it apart. I've rearranged. I have taken it apart. The back. The whole, the whole reason for me having a four-wheel drive camping set up, uh, well, yeah, what I, what I used. Tinker and My change. vessel for that, for camping, <laughs> is now completely not what it was. And literally, I, I think I spoke about it last episode. It's through boredom that I've done this. Really? So, yeah, yeah. I yeah. had a... I had a Sunday, um, Lauren was away and I woke up, I did a few things in the morning and I just had nothing else planned for the rest of the day and I thought to myself, oh, I'm just going to go outside and start ripping the car apart. Ripping stuff off my car. Well, and Jaden, I've got so many photos sent to me. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's why it's lucky that I've got friends in places that know what they're doing because I don't know what I'm doing and I just started pulling stuff off. My front yard is a junkyard now. Um, Records so, yard. <laughs> yeah, it's a, yeah, honestly, you don't come past. If you do, take something. Um, but yeah, I, so I'm taking it apart. And part of the reason for it, it was always on my mind to do it. I just didn't think I was going to do it now. But I, I found a couple of free Sundays in a row. So that's where it's ended up. So if Canopy was the first day. It took a bit longer because all the wiring and um, to the 12 volt system, which is what our topic is around today. Yeah, which yeah. Is, it's, this is purely a selfish topic today. <laughs> this is not for the listeners. This is purely for, for my own benefit. And I'm going to pick your brain and your brain, Jaden. Um, so, so you pull your canopy off and you're driving around for a week with just the carpet on the drawers? Yes. Yep. Do, do you park undercover or? Yeah. So that was, so, um, Perth being Perth, the day that I took the canopy off was the one day in about eight years it pissed rain. <laughs> oh, no. I was <laughs> thinking the, about that. But I was under, under the carport, so I was all good. Yeah. It was actually quite nice to be outside and it was a little bit cooler with some rain. and Just couldn't go anywhere. Just, just couldn't go anywhere. <laughs> anyway, um, shock, it cleared up and now it's been hot ever since and not a, not, a, uh, not a chance of rain. So I've been all good for that week. Then I got the drawers out. So right now I'm rolling around with... Uh, 
a battery sitting in the back of my tub loose, still wired up. It, and a, a lot would, of dirty licorice lying around. Yeah, a lot of dirty <laughs> I've never heard that one. That's a good one. A lot of dirty licorice. Um, so that's where I'm at now. So I've got a bare tub, um, no tub line or anything, and just wires sitting everywhere, still hooked up to a battery that's that heavy. I don't actually have to lock it down. It hasn't moved the whole, the whole oh, few so days. Been it's driving not around. actually fixed down. That's not fixed down. That was in oh. a battery box that was fixed down. Because I tried to move it before. I couldn't even move it. Mate, I had to, like, it almost took an army to pull that thing out. Wow. Um, yeah, I, if I was feeling, if I was a bit sore after a game of footy, it would have been no chance I was getting that out. This is so <laughs> heavy. Um, but it brings us to our topic today. So I want to touch on 12 volt systems. And like Jaden said, I've ripped the car apart. And now part of the reason is I want to go to a lithium battery. I want to have that behind the seats in a slim line design. And then I want to keep it really basic in the back. I've spoken about the front runner boxes that I've yeah. used. Um, I love those. I don't actually need the draw system to have those in my vehicle. So I can take them in and out as I please. And then I've got the full access to the whole tub now as well, which is... Um, which is really user friendly for me in, in um, I suppose. So you're still going to run power to the back, but your battery is going to be on the inside behind the back seat. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So here's the the little bit of the conundrum is for my setup. Now this is just going to pe- this will be a conversation between Ronnie and I. So I'm sorry to everyone <laughs> listening, but hopefully you do get something out of it because a lot of us uh, I find don't know a lot about. We know I know a little bit, but I don't know enough about. 12 volt systems and especially the installation process yeah. and, the, and the best practices to keep it all safe. So my, my it's a rabbit hole, man. It is, yeah. And the one thing I've done myself is hooked up my um, UHF. Pretty easy, user friendly thing. But this this is the whole wiring system from front to back. Um, battery chargers in there. Yeah. So I've got a BCDC charger, Red Arc um, charger that sits up the front next to my crank battery. Yeah, we spoke about and this. my auxiliary batteries down the back yep so, so yeah talk to me about what should happen there anyway well <clears throat> many people who have the uh bcdc or dcdc charger on the front that's a 12 volt charger so it's hooked into the alternator and then it charges the auxiliary battery yeah so having it at the front is okay all good and well if you're charging the battery in the front and what i mean by that is your secondary battery in the front you don't need a charger to charge your main battery because your alternator does that does job. That, yep. Yeah. So in your case, your battery is right at the back. These chargers should be no more than a meter away from the battery. So whoever installed that for you um, either didn't read the instructions or didn't really know. Yeah. So, or both. This was years and years ago. Too. Yeah. It's been this way for five or six years. Yeah. And, and it can still work, but ideally the charger is right next to the battery yep so that that way it will get its maximum charge uh so the battery you have now is a is a lead acid right yes yeah so and you're going with a lithium so you, you probably you can get away with getting a a bigger charger as well so it, right. it just pumps it in because the lithium battery will charge much faster although you don't really need to i know we're getting a little bit deep here but um a lithium battery and a lead acid battery they're very different so a lithium battery will charge five times faster wow. uh, on average than a lead acid battery. It also weighs about half the amount of weight. With a lead acid battery, once it gets to 50%, that's pretty much the battery done. It's down to like 10 volts. Ah, oh, right. It needs a charge straight away. Whereas okay. the lithium battery can go down to 20, even beyond. And it will still be giving you the same... It'll drop in voltage, but it takes a lot longer. Okay. Yeah. So once a lithium battery is down like 12 volts, it's low. Like it's really low. Yep. So you want to charge that up, but it it can handle it. Now, obviously you can take it down to 5%, even nullify the whole power out of it and then just fire it up again. But the more you, you, the deeper you go into that charge, the less cycles you're going to have. Right. It's the same with a lead acid battery. Once you get past 50%, your cycle life is... Dim, is really diminishing fast. Yep. Whereas they recommend you go down to eighty percent and then top up. So often if they get away with right. this cycle life on a battery. Oh, you got two thousand cycles out of this battery. Yeah, but the two thousand cycles are at maybe eighty percent or something yeah, like that. Okay. They're not at twenty percent. This certainly not on a lead acid battery. You know. Yep. I've had a lot of issues with it to be honest, but performance 
I haven't always been happy with. I think I think we almost we experienced that a little bit on the road when we were coming back from Adelaide. Like I'd yeah. been driving for uh, the sec the day we pulled into Canal to Homestead. Uh, it didn't really charge. I remember, I had to get the panels out because oh, there was so much vo yeah, top of voltage. Yeah. So, so it hasn't performed perfectly. It hasn't been a massive issue for me because I don't spend too long away at any one time or sit still for any yeah. one time. But this new one that I'm chasing. So in my mind, it's a slimline battery behind the seats of the Ranger, uh, the back seats. And then it's also repl uh, shifting the battery charger to the rear seats as well. Do you think I should keep that same charger or are you saying to upgrade that to a bigger one? Uh, I reckon you could get away with the charger you have. Okay. And that would be helpful because I would yeah. love to save the cost. Yeah. And how long you had the charger for? That's been the whole time I've had the, the system. Yeah. The, the system went in together at, yeah. the, at the same time. It, it'll be fine. Yep. Slap that in the back and it'll thank you for it as well because now it's out of the elements. It's not going yeah. to get as hot and, well, actually, inside the car does get hot, but when it's running, it, it shouldn't get as hot. Yep. Uh, it is the ideal place to put it right next to the battery. Everything's there. Your wiring and, and, and all that is going to be a, not, a lot neater as well yep. because the, the further away you've got to run the wire, the thicker the wire you need, otherwise you get volt drop. Right. And That's probably part of the issue too. Yeah, and then you're adding weights and wire is not cheap, especially yeah, when you're right. talking about the thick stuff. Yep. So what's the difference between – so there's – I'm assuming the really slim line ones, they are, they are tiny, slim. Yeah. The ones that I've – a couple of the ones that I've seen – and I've been looking around the last sort of week or two. So the difference between the slim line, the really slim line ones, and, and there's, so there's like your normal big thick ones, big batteries that like a box. Yes. Then there's, there's a, a bit slimmer and then there's like tiny slim. Oh, like the real slim ones. Yeah, yeah like yeah. I'm talking really low profile sort of style stuff. Yeah. What's the difference between the three of them? Is there anything different or are you going to pay a little bit more for the less yeah, I matter? Think It'd just be price, really. Okay. I mean, at the end of the day, they all got the same little cells in them. They're just like they're just allocated in a different way, laid out differently. Yeah, just laid laid out okay. differently. That's, that's what. So there's right no for it. there's no performance difference. No, not not really. I mean, if anything, it'll probably cool down easier because it's it's got a bigger surface area. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, that's I yeah. It's just more the price, really. Right. Uh, but then it's also to suit the application. So. If you're going to spend an extra 100 or 200 bucks, but it fits much better for your setup, yep. well, sometimes you're better off doing that because otherwise that cost is going to find you somewhere else because now you've got to change something else to make the battery fit in the back again. You know? So yep. that could cost more labor to get the wire to the back or more wires, whatever. So you're often better off if that's the ideal um, thing for you to do behind your, your seat to make it fit better, that's the one you should go for. Right. Yeah, it's just it's just a logic way of of looking at it, because I, I know like everything costs money in the end, right? But that little bit extra is sometimes worth doing, and then maybe cut down somewhere else. Yep. Because behind your seat, you don't have a lot of room. You want something that's going to work nice and be laid out quite nice as well. Yeah. Okay. So how do you how do I manage the layout then? Because obviously. You're going to spend a bit for a new yeah. decent battery. And if you are needing a battery charger, you're going to spend some money there. The wiring, all of this. Is it worth me having a crack at it myself? Like, is it easy enough to do? It's, um, it's definitely worth having a crack yourself. But you do have to have some kind of knowledge of, of what you're doing. Or at yep. least uh, watch some Ronnie Dale videos on, yeah. on some wiring maybe. <laughs> oh, there's, plenty, there's plenty of information out there. Plug. Yeah, it's a bit of a plug there. <laughs> uh, I've done quite a few electrical uh, videos. Yep. Now, it all comes down to making it as neat as possible. Yeah. And that's probably something that I haven't really done until now. Okay. So, and it's easy to make stuff look messy. Like wiring never looks good. So if you can have a panel, you can hide the wiring behind. That's ideal. Yep. But don't treat that as like a under the rug kind of thing no one's going to see this shit let's just do whatever don't do that yeah, like, yeah. just just make it as neat as you can even if it's being hidden because yep. even if you try and make it as neat as you can behind something it's still not going to be that neat in the end yeah I, I like the fact of having you crack at it because like we just had a look at before because I haven't installed it myself that's it I actually don't know what's running where exactly. I, and I can track it to a certain point yeah and then without 
as much knowledge as I need, I can't figure out the rest of it. So I've got like there's there's missing. It's like a it's like a dream you can't remember. <laughs> it's like I picked up pieces, <laughs> but there's a big chunk in the middle I can't remember. Yeah, and I don't know yeah. where. I, so I don't know what's going on in there. Um, I might actually. But if you've got time before you, <laughs> I'll just take you out there. But yeah. um, you're trying to piece the, together the mystery in between the two, the two terminations yeah, of the wire. Yeah. And and the worst part about wiring is, you get something done to your car, then you get something else done to your car, and then you get something else and something else and something else. Yeah. And all of a sudden, six people are had to go at your car. Yeah. And the next person might be needed, and the first person, but it's like, oh, this guy's done a shit job, so I'm just gonna tap into this or follow this yep. and then the next guy does that you know it, it's just it ends up in a bit of a mess yeah yeah you know reminds me i've actually got a, a really good auto spark who's who didn't do the original job but he's cleaned things up for me since without making the big moves that i will make yeah. now um so i might need to touch base with him again what do you recommend for me as so in terms of my camp setup obviously i've gone to the no canopy at this stage that might change if it if it doesn't work for me i can easily just bolt that back on yeah but uh, so it's going to be open now obviously the whole thing so it's going to be exposed to the weather um the battery and it's and the charger itself are going to be obviously undercover in the in the back of the cab what do i need to run a fridge some lights you know a couple of sig sockets whatever like a really basic setup like how big a battery is enough i reckon for your needs 100 amp hours is more than enough yep so, give you an example, my Troopy has quite a bit of running off that battery. It's just a 100 amp hour. Oh, right. Uh, is it really? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And only because I have two fridges, you know, one's just a tiny fridge, one's a big fridge, doesn't matter how big the fridges are, the compressor is still running. Yep. And you've got two of them. At, that's, at that point in time, you would need a bigger battery. And I wish I had a bigger battery. But only running one fridge, it can just sit in the sun. Yeah. It doesn't right. matter. Yeah. So, for your... In your case, I would say 100 amp hours is enough, but instead of running all these individual wires to the back, run one Anderson, uh, run two wires to the back on an Anderson plug because all you really need in the back is, is enough for a fridge, camp lights. Uh, what else are you going to run out of there? <sighs> not much? Not much. Nah. Yeah. There's not, I don't have a lot of other needs. Okay. Well, let's say you can go up to 80 amps to the back and it's and then you put this Anderson plug to one of the sides of your tubs uh, of your tub and you fix it there fuse it at the battery end now you've got a nice easy setup to work off because all you need now you can make your own board and put all your little fuses and stuff on it and then mount that into your tub yep because all you got to do is is plug it into that Anderson plug so you can change it whenever you want you don't yeah. have to mess around with the other section right gotcha. so get the main section nice and neat then run that one single wire to the back and then that can power everything because if it's got 80 amps of power, perfect. Even 50 amps will be enough for you. Yep. And then you can plug it into your own little switchboard at the back and that's where you can get all the individual wires coming out of and you could run your fridge off it. You could run camp lights. You can even have extra ports for other things. Yeah. Yep. Run a fan if you're sleeping in the, in the back. Even if you put a canopy on later, you can run stuff through that Anderson yeah. plug as well. Uh, one thing you probably can't do is if you add, if you want to run coffee machines and stuff, but then you're going to need a big inverter. Okay. Yeah, so um, that's my next question. I don't understand. I, so I know a little bit about 12 volt and yep. what that, inter but the, when you go to inverters, yes. I know that's still part of a 12 volt system, but I don't know, what does an inverter do? So an inverter just converts the power from 12 volt to 240 volt. Right. Um, and it can also do the other way around. So say if you buy a camera online, and you get a charger with it that converts from um 240 down to 12 yep. or whatever it is your camera takes inverter just does a reverse reverse situation but the more you want out of it the bigger the inverter is going to be and the more wiring it demands and the more power it demands okay. and most people are sold on the fact they need a 1500 watt or 2000 watt or 3000 watt inverter and a lot of the time they're just running a freaking coffee machine yeah okay you don't need that. All like all I run, take it for someone who heads out and films and charges multiple cameras, runs two laptops and stuff off a 350 watt inverter. That's all really? most people need. Yeah, that's it. This yeah. is actually this is putting me at ease a little bit. Yeah, you, you you don't need all that stuff. I mean, 2000 watt inverter, you're almost paying a dollar per watt. Right. 
Yeah. So if I so, so say I put in my hundred amp battery, um, I've, I've installed all that. I've got I've got you know outputs for the fridge and the lights and a couple extras in case I need them. And then I want to add an inverter at a later date. Yes. Is that easy enough to do? Yeah, yeah, that's easy yeah. enough to do. Yeah, the easiest way to do it uh, would be so you don't take out of the 50 amp real estate on the back. But if you've got 80 amps, you could run it off the back, really. Right. Because uh, a 300 watt inverter will take maybe, I don't know, 30 amps at the most. So my calculations are way out. It'll be less than that, I reckon. Okay. Uh, so yeah, um, you, can easily, you can easily run that off the back. Yep. But you couldn't run a big one right. because there's too much that's going to draw. The wire won't be big, big enough either. Yep. So what about my outlets in the back or the outputs? Are they are they water, like waterproof ones and stuff? Because I'm I'm exposed now and I haven't been for yeah everything's been undercover for me yeah since I've had the setup. So that's that's a that's yeah. a really 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 good question. So for that, instead of just making a board where you put your stuff on, you would make like a box, okay, like an electrical box. You can get them from J Car or Ultronics, you yep. know. Or twelve volt shop wherever. Yep. And you could basically just drill your own little holes for Siggy plugs and USB port ports and stuff. And most of those they have like a rubber seal on it, and that should be pretty good in in wet weather. Okay. And you can mount them in spots where maybe they're underneath or something, so that way when you plug stuff in, there's no there's no way for sideways rain to get in or anything. Yeah, gotcha. That's probably yep. the best way. Yep. But an Anderson plug you can just leave sitting there. Like I've got Anderson plugs. Uh, under my 79 under the tray and that's yeah. been underwater for a period of time and yep. all you got to do is just brush the green death off later, you know? <laughs> green death. <laughs> Have we, did he, Ronnie called that something somewhere else, didn't he? Yeah, one of our early, early, early green episodes, death. he's yeah. talked about green death. <laughs> oh, it was uh, Torben's wiring in the, because he got salt water in it. Oh, in the oh yeah. Oh, yeah. That yeah, must have been the first time we talked about the Simpson Desert. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Talked yeah. about it every episode since, I reckon, because it was almost crazy. Well, <laughs> um, and then we had the great man on. Yeah, that. Yeah, tell you who loved that that chat. My my old man loved that. Did he? Yeah, he wants to meet Torben for some reason. Now he's like, no, I think everyone wants to meet Torben. <laughs> <laughs> How many messages and comments he's did we have? Very popular like, man. I love Torben. Yeah, <laughs> great man. Anyway, sorry, back to it. Um, a lot, I did lose track a little bit there, but that's interesting. Um, Anderson plugs are the way to go. Yep. Yeah. Mister Anderson is the way to go. Is that who? Who? Why, I wonder. I'm gonna, why are they called Anderson plugs? I don't why know. Actually, are they it could have been Johnson plugs, aren't they? Okay, well, Dahl plugs. plugs. It's like Deutsch plugs. Yeah, they You have to assume they're German, right? Uh, Anderson power. The power pole connector was designed and patented. And pa I can't pain patent. You know, you know what the word patented. is? Patented. Patented. I didn't even think I said it right then. Um, <laughs> Glad I didn't have told you, English is hard. <laughs> By That's Albert amazing. and J.M. Anderson. There you go. Mr. So, Anderson. Yeah, the, Mr. the Anderson brothers maybe. Um, anyway, yeah, that might be the go. Um, I did have one more thing before we started talking about Torben and we all got <clears throat> dreamy eyes. Sorry um, to interrupt Green you, Death, Anderson plug. Green um, Death, Anderson plug, waterproofing, green, yeah. electrical box. Good. Fuses, fusing. Oh, this fusing. Is, it's making for a great podcast, boys. Fusing. Uh, yeah. Is it actually? <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, just Ronnie and I talking. Just you guys um, thinking. Oh, I love it. What's actually uh, more important than fuses are your wire sizes first. Yeah. Because I saw you, a recent video from Keelan saying, whatever you think you need, go one size up. Yeah, it's probably, uh, it's probably the best way of going about it. But And he's a sparky, so I took that as gospel, but not, yeah. not, not an auto-elect, but I was just yeah. like, he must know. It's, it's, it's probably the best way to do it. Yeah. You're not going to stuff up, and if you wanted to run more off that one wire later, you it's can. Got capacity, yep. Yeah. It's, a lot of people run just the bare bones or just under because everything is overrated to a certain degree, right? Yeah, okay. to, to allow yeah. for something. But... You know, people run the bare minimum or just under. They're going to have problems later if they upgrade, say, like, say they put like a single row light bar on the roof. Yep. And then they want to go a dual row because the single row doesn't give them enough light. Uh, or they've been driving with Torben and feel like their lights are inadequate, which happens when you drive with Torben because he's got so many lights in his car. <laughs> yeah. You want to upgrade your lights. Oh, shit. The wire's too thin now. Now the wire's become a fuse because the wire's too thin. So... If the wire is too thin for the current that's going through it, the wire becomes the fuse, not the fuse. Ah, oh, really? Yeah, it can heat up and just melt and just burn. Yeah, right. Um, Didn't know that. And 
that's when you get that horrible electrical smell Ooh, and you're like, shit, where yeah. is that coming from? Where is that coming from? Is it my car? Is it your car? I, is it my car? I, when, I ripped, <laughs> when I first ripped everything out, I thought I was getting that smell and I think it was just my head. Oh. Uh, like, because I, I, I went back, I like le- left it and then I went back the next morning, I went around it and I couldn't smell anything and I just... Oh, like, you left it over. <laughs> yeah, I left it because I was like, I, just, I can't find, I can't, nothing should be making yeah. that. But Once I reckon, is on fire. Because I didn't it. know what I was doing in my head, I was like, <laughs> maybe I was smelling something. <laughs> it's, it's parked down the road now, it could be on fire. But, uh, uh, might be the next one over burning toast. <laughs> <laughs> it probably was. Um, but, yeah, right. But talking about fuses, you got to make sure that your fuse is the adequate size. Yep. Uh, not too big either. It's got to be the adequate size. You, if it's too small, it's going to keep popping when, you know, things are getting hot or things are really being asked for, you know, yeah, okay. asked for power. Like uh, my 80 amp fuse in the Troopy went recently and I'm, I'm putting another 80 amp in, but I might have to upgrade to a 100 amp because that's the next step up. Yep. On the MIDI fuse, there's these uh, flat ones. You've got like a spade at each end. Oh, yeah, I know the ones. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're probably the best fuses to use when you are running bigger sort of wire. Yep. Um, they're quite easy to get to. Just make sure you turn them so they have the clear side facing up so you can see if they're blown or not. Right. I often do it the other way around because I can read that it's an what 80. number is, yeah. But then I'm like, shit, now I've got to pull it out to see if it's blown. Anyway. That's, good. That's a good little tip actually. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, because sometimes they're annoying to get out yep. when they're in a certain spot. Gotcha. So those fuses, they're probably the best to run those wires, but you just got to make sure that the fuse is big enough. Yep. Um, and if a fuse blows... Look, if everything is, is fused as you're doing your own electrics, as long as it's fused from the uh, power end, you can't really go wrong. Right. Which, which means that if you, if you reverse the polarity, which means you, know, you put plus to minus, minus to plus on something, and then instead of causing a fire, you just blow the fuse. You're like, oh, shit, okay, well, I learned my mistake. Let's go this way. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. if you're doing your own wiring, just have it fused. Yep. Good tip. Um, another thing I did want to touch on that I was going to mention before too is... Um, what you think I should do in the in the tub as a op- option to because I've been looking around for a tub liner because I got rid of that when oh. I put the drawers in the first time around, yeah. Um, and now I'm I'm left wanting some plastic to put in the yeah. tub again to just just to yeah make it look a bit nicer. But what what was your little word of advice? Because that, that this interests me, and I want to. Yeah. I'm pretty. I want to see what this is all about. Well, because you got holes all through your tub yeah. at the moment because you had other things fitted down. Yeah, you've got. It's like Swiss cheese. <laughs> it's not great. So you can either spend ages plugging them all up, and it's going to look shit by plugging them all up because you're going to need sicker flex. You're going to need to do like a bolt and nut almost. Yep. Just to plug a hole. Yep. Or you could get grommets, but that was actually part of me. I was that was a bit of a burp there. Sorry. Hunting bruise. Sorry, viewers. Yeah, I should have one on the way here. Of course, you did. <laughs> of course I did. <laughs> um, uh, where was I? Yeah, yeah. So bed liner. Bed liner, like the spray in bed liner, like, yep. it's like, a, like a Raptor liner or yep. something like that. That would be the ideal thing because what they'll do is they'll just tape over the holes, spray the whole thing and then now this is sealed. It's going to absorb the sound because if you put like a plastic liner in which they cost like almost $1,000 as they are, yep. you should be able to get it lined for the same or less, I reckon. Yeah, right. Uh, and then it absorbs the sound. Uh, it'll plug all the holes and you'll need to drill new holes if you're yeah. going to fit things, but that's fine. Yeah, Just yeah. drill through yeah. it. Just well, send it. I, I'm, I'm actually, I'm going to look right into that because I want to, if I can, because I, not that you don't lose a lot of space putting in the plastic tub liner and all that sort of thing, but if it's actually a spray on, then I can actually, it's so much easier to access the, sh- like, you know, yeah, you know, the inside shell of the tub, if that makes sense. The inside shell, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, you know the, I mean? the, yeah, the inner, the inside, yeah, yeah, the inner the in, shell. The inside shell, <laughs> <laughs> it kind of makes sense. There's nothing else for it, but that it makes it so much cleaner for me that way. Um, especially if I because the some of the um, tub lines that I've seen can actually the, there's no like sort of drilling down or screwing in. It's kind of like no, a they're, they're chafing. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, oh, I don't know. Yeah, there's a bit of weight in there. Is that going to shift around? So they do shift around. Yeah, and stuff gets underneath it. Yeah, and, and I can like I can even just see from the stuff you had in there before, you can see where it's chafed yeah. at the paint. It's not and a good looking tub at the moment, is it? No, nah, no, nah, it should <laughs> be right, it mate. Just spray it. <laughs> should just be spray right. It. Raptor, I'm coming. Okay, we're spraying <laughs> it. Um, so what, what's your then? What's your ideal for me? So what, how do you think? We'll, we'll wrap it up here because I don't want to. Like I, I 
could go on all day, and this is I, I do again apologise. This is purely for my benefit here. Um, oh, I think a lot of people no, will get a I think people are, are yeah. going to learn hopefully something from it. And I haven't asked you about your setup, Jaden, actually, which I'll ask you at the end because um, I just it's all about me. So I'm going to find out. Oh, um, keep it about you, mate. <laughs> what What do you think for me? So I've got I've, I've gone the slim line because I want it to fit in the back seats. I've say I've kept my charger, relocated that to the back. Everything's tip top. It's nice and neat. Everything's where it should be. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'm creating the little the, the panel in the tub. What exactly? Or the, or the box? Yeah, or the box. Yeah. What exactly should I have in there for my? You've seen how I camp and and how yeah. often I camp. It's not a whole lot. I'm the weekend warrior, if you want to call it that. Yeah, I know that's that's most people's cases, really. Yeah. What's the What's the ideal? What's your ideal for that? Okay, I'll definitely put two Siggy plugs in there. Yep. Because you always want that extra one. Yeah. You're gonna find that you're gonna run something off it. You could run a fridge off that too, but. I would prefer those, uh, I know them as Engel style plugs. Yep. Because yeah, you yep. put it in and you can screw it and I've it stays there. I've actually got one of those in my, that's my yeah. Dometic fridge is running off an Engel plug. Yeah, I yeah. Had, had I don't know, are they called that, the plugs? I don't know. I, I think they are actually. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm sure they are. But that's that's the best plug because they screw in, they don't fall out. Yes, yep. Uh, or in the, the other case, I would put it on an Anderson plug. Yep. And that's that's another good way of doing it. But if you got one of those plugs, just just plug that in. But then have an extra Siggy plug because you could plug any light in. Yeah. You know, you could maybe have an awning light. Yep. Plug that into one of those and then just clip it up. You don't need to fix it to anything. Uh, I would go some USB C's. Yep, they're handy. Definitely C's because <laughs> C's. In, in two years' time. That's you, all there is. It, that's all there is, mate. Yep. Go a couple of A's for all the old shit you got. Yeah, which <laughs> is, yeah. A lot of my shit. <laughs> what else? Uh, put some nice, colourful switches on there. Yeah. Just to make it look fancy. I, I want I want everything there. Yeah. I want it nice and... Everything wants to... Put a voltmeter. Yes, a voltmeter. Yeah. A oh, voltmeter, because then you can keep an eye on it. Solar? So my solar's on the bull bar. My and solar ah, Anderson's yes. on the bull bar. Okay. Are we relocating that, do you reckon? Yes. It's not a big issue, but... Yes. What you can do, you can do it the easy way. Just put the solar inside the back of the seat, right? So uh-huh. you have the plug there. Uh, so if you're running a blanket, just leave the plug there, open the door, plug it in, slam the door. The seal is enough to yep, let to, the wire go yeah, in. Yeah, okay. That's the easiest way. If you want a solar panel on the roof, then you could run two wires out to where you know, you're know you going to put that Anderson plug in the back yep. of the tub, run two wires, same thickness, and then one of them can just go to the roof and, and be solar. Yep. And then you've got that sorted. You could even right. run it anyway and then it's there. If you don't use it, you don't use it. Yep. You know? Yep. I've got some ideas about solar too that I want to run by you off air. Okay. In case these are ideas that may... A bit too embarrassing. No. Really good ideas that might take off. What the, oh, du- the, okay. the Dulux paint solar from Bunnings? No. <laughs> People are going to start Googling <laughs> that now. <laughs> no, I, well, if they... I just want to run something. They're probably, it's probably out there already. Maybe uh, maybe for Patreons. We maybe for Patreon, and then if it's a really good business idea, yeah, the five Patreons can. Then we know on which ones. Yeah. We, we know which one stole the idea. Then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't don't be that guy. Um, all right, I, I think that's enough of my setup. I'm pretty happy with that. I think I'll be using you through the process, mate. If you don't mind, mate, you just keep sending the photos. Um, <laughs> I, I can't pay you, but I'll I need your help. Um, all good, mate. And Jaden, you too. So, what, what's your setup actually, mate? In your seventy six electrical. Yeah. Do you have one? Yeah. So yeah. just dual batteries in the front. Yeah. And Do you know, are they, are just, they lithium or lead acid? Do you know? Um, they, they're both lead, lead acid yeah. as far yeah. as I'm aware. Yeah. Um, one I do one need to replace one of them. would be a deep cycle? Them. Yeah. One's yeah. a deep cycle that runs yeah. to the back. And then we've got the, like, just a little cigarette port there as well as a ARB twin compressor oh yeah that's the other thing um and it's yeah it's it's a it's a huge mess the guy bought the car off like it was all done before yeah i've done it and it's just a massive mess but then i've got um well before i took the rooftop tent off i had the oh yeah cabling that went up to the top for the steady lights on top yep um which is a pain to do yes and then i've got um, where do you run the wire to get up so you know uh, on your on your hood as a, when it comes up, like right on the front between your windscreen and your hood, oh. there's that little strip of metal. Yeah, yeah. So on the far side of one of that strip, I've cut like a, 
a tiny little hole in yeah. it and the wires are coming up out of there, running up the side of the windscreen he behind my behind the snorkel and yeah. then they go to the roof. But oh, it's yeah. all like attached and heat okay. shrunk and on. And yeah. At least you didn't run it through the snorkel. I've seen people are modified yes, do that. Yes, I've seen that as well. <laughs> that had to go? No, that's, that's terrible. <laughs> it's terrible? Yeah. No, because you're cutting holes in like your air intake and stuff. Gotcha, gotcha. gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Not a good idea. And... Not a good idea. Um, yeah, so it's just running up the side, cut a, cut a little hole in that little yeah. plate there and then uh, it goes up and then I've got some wires that go to the dash board area yep. for switches for the lights and... Radios mm. and all that, but yeah, it's are all messy. You, I haven't done much. Of switching over to lithium like me. Yeah, definitely. You want to come? We try and get a two for one deal. Oh man, absolutely. <laughs> tell, tell you what. Um, <laughs> Just under the yeah. bonnet might be a bit difficult, but however, um, no, I was so. I, I had plans at one stage to put a battery in the back, um, yeah. so I could run fridge, camera gear, like a third, everything, and then I was going to hook that to go to the rooftop tent to put power up there as well. But that right. just runs off of like an Anderson plug as well. How are you going without the rooftop? It's so nice. I'll tell you what, like not having that weight. Yeah, it's so really? nice. In, it, I feel fuel? like it looks better, feels better. Like it's nicer to drive. Wow. It, it's, it's like, you know how like you're carrying a heavy backpack and then you take it off at the end of the day and yeah, you're just like, just, oh, yeah. that's amazing. I feel like that's what my car feels. <laughs> that's a great analogy it's, actually. <laughs> it's happened again. This happened to Chris, the Prado Chris. Oh yeah. Yeah, camera guy. And... He took his rooftop off and it never came back on. Really? Yeah. yeah. So what do you, what do you, if we go camp, when we do our Swag. camp, when we do our camp, um, yeah, something to sleep in that's, well, I can put it back on. Yeah, I, I, can, I can put but, it back on. I won't. So you got, have I, you got I a might. swag? I do. I've got a bunch of swags. Oh, I do, yeah. Shout out to, um, heaps of swag, eh? Swagger. Yeah. <laughs> Mate, I've got a few swags. Who's the shout out to? Tony. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wild track. Oh, you got yeah, poles no, this yeah. time? Yeah. yeah, you got the... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for that, boys. That was a fun <laughs> night. Yeah. Oh, that was great um, for me. Yeah. Um, it was funny. Yeah, cool. All right. Uh, yeah, so but, I've got a few swags. Um, I don't have a... I was thinking I will just put it in the back seat, like put the back seat down and throw it in the back. Just like, but, like strap it down a, on top of the roof and just through the, yeah, just through the windows. Yeah, through the windows. Yeah. <laughs> that wouldn't fuck my paint up. Um. We we need to people need to hold us to this camp challenge that we mentioned too because we actually need oh, to that's do this. What you're talking about? Yeah. Like, I, I was yeah. thinking about it during the week. Like we can't let this just fall over and all forget about it. Like this, we we well, we, we haven't we, promised it, but like once I think this tattoo we need, happens, we'll make the camp. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, that's, well, look, the tattoo is in the works. That is planned. I've, yeah, I've like, reached out. We've got been conversations um, externally. Raf Watt at Bittersweet Tattoo. He's yep. going to be doing it. Good man and. Uh, yeah, we just got to do it. We just have to book it in. We've yeah. got to find a we're Sunday just... and it's very hard to find. Yeah, for the tattoo. Find a day. Yeah. Do you have yeah. a pen here? We could just do one here. Do one here? Yeah. My God. <laughs> <laughs> no. Open. No. Thank no. Come they're, on, like, they're like prison tats. <laughs> I, well. <laughs> well. <laughs> yeah. So look, it's, it's not like we've ever not done something that we said we we're going to do. Phone line. That's happening. It oh. is. It's happening. Yeah. Yeah. Is that the cool thing? No. Oh, that what is, is cool. the cool thing? I don't know. <laughs> no. Okay, you, later. Never going to tell you. All oh. right. Well, I'm I'm happy with that 12 volt chat. Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you, Jaden. Here you put it at the end there. You're very um, welcome. And I th- I'll keep you updated. Yeah. Yeah. I'll well, keep you updated. Let us. Is that smoke? You smell smoke? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, they no, must how be. How far away is your car? They must be firing up the kitchen <laughs> down there at the pub. Fuses, mate. Fuses. Um, fuses. No, I'm pretty sure it's Maccas down the road. Um, yeah. Oh, mate. All right, 12 volts done. No worries. Thank you. There you Appreciate go. That. Happy hopefully with that. Everyone, Keep us updated. I will. Yeah. And hopefully, if anyone's got any advice for me um, or have got some cool tub setups, uh, Please yeah, send anything through. to look at. Comment yeah. on YouTube or yeah. send them through to our Instagram. We've also got an email, the four drive podcast at backchatstudios.com.au. Yeah. So send us in stuff there. Uh, please do. That'd be greatly appreciated. Uh, I think we just jump in, mate, to around the fire pit. We get the fire oh. cranking. Ooh. It's very hot for a fire. Very hot for the fire. It's getting closer to fire season. Though. It's a it very is. electric episode, this one, isn't it? Oh, oh nice. Oh, right. Hopefully, it's not <laughs> shitty electrics and it causes a fire. Yeah, hopefully, we have no fires in the studio. Oh, the I'm gonna, studio. I'm going to shut the laptop this, and uh, let Jaden fire away. Oh, uh, fire away. Fire away. Yeah. Hell yeah. Go. He's on. <laughs> this, this fire <laughs> pit brought to you by Duggo's Wiring. <laughs> 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 oh, that is good. Oh, mate. Okay. That is good. I like um, this one in off our last episode. <laughs> well, not the last one, the one before that, sorry. Uh, do I, 
Kevin Thurton, 11, 12. Do I need heavy bash plates if I'm not rock climbing? I did hit him with a bit of an answer. Ooh, not really. Did if he's not rock climbing, not heavy. Well, if rock he's climbing. not doing, if he's if he's not rock uh, climbing, he's not doing like that crazy kind of stuff where you're yeah. going up rocks, dunes, yeah, yeah. or whatever. Well, yeah. Dunes, you're probably fine, but rock hills and all that. Mm. Yeah, not not real. I mean, they do work as a good skip pan as well. Sometimes they do actually help uh, when you're getting bogged on sand. Yeah, they do help a bit there, but you don't need it. No, Just as a bit of a sled almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah. they add a lot of weight to the car. But yeah. the weight is in the right place. I think. Uh, in my non-expert opinion, you probably don't if you're not doing heavy no. stuff. Like I don't have one, and I've yeah. done enough and bumped and scraped a couple of things, but never yeah. too much of an issue. Yeah. There's other things to spend your money on. Yeah, but they do look nice. I do like the look of a bash plate. They do, and most most cars do have bash plates from yeah, they've factory. got a, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not obviously is probably not too strong, but do you have one? Uh, well, oh, no, because oh, they're all solid, which of your car? solid axles. So, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. True. Uh, so yeah, a bit hard to squeeze one in down there. Yeah, no, it's difficult. more of a diff pumpkin protector that that I suppose will go for, or not? Yeah. A what? Sorry. D- a diff pumpkin protector, like oh, a like another yeah, skin yeah, on a diff yeah, pumpkin. Yeah. You don't. Yeah. Never seen the need. No, it, it's more if you if you give it a hard time. Yeah. But they look good. I mean, if anyone give gives it, it a hard, hard time, time, though, like it would be you. Yeah. Well, that, that's probably a good answer then for Kevin. Yeah. You, you, yeah. If you're not doing rock climbing, you don't need one. You probably don't need them. I right. gave my Hilux a hard time, that my old petrol one, and that didn't have bash plates. But I did remould the bash plate that was on it, the factory. Yeah. And then I did change it afterwards, actually. I'll yeah. tell you what, the, the one time you want a bash plate is when you, you, you're going to regret not having one. Yeah. You know? That's probably true, too. Like. I, I, I would rec- I, I wouldn't get one though. I have nah. no idea if that sentence made sense. No, nah, I did, but I wouldn't. Yeah. yeah. Unless you unless you're driving rocks, Kevin, don't bother. Yeah. Yeah. There's other things. Yeah. Or if you're letting someone else take your car. And <laughs> yeah. Imagine how many cars or shelters you could get for the value of a bash plate. That's true. Well, you could get a few. You get quite a few. <laughs> you get quite. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, now I'm thinking. Uh, <laughs> next one this measure everything in shelters <laughs> Travis Forrest uh, is there a time or place that you felt uneasy or worried about camping there Ooh, whereabouts anywhere is oh, there anywhere. a time or place that you felt question. uneasy about camping great question oh yeah around the Kimber area uh, because I'll, I'll pull over at like 1am middle of the night I'll pull up put a swag on the far side of the car so I could try and block some of the road noise. And then when you hear people just rolling up and you're like, what are they doing? Yeah. yeah. So then I, I wake up, I actually get out of swag, looking around, you can see the car, can't see the person. It's like, what's going on? Generally around that area, I, I don't really like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I sleep with stuff in my, I sleep with uh, metal in my, in my swag, so don't bother knocking. <laughs> <laughs> around uh, hey, Ronnie, do you Iron know? Knob. Iron knob around that area, the iron knob area. Uh, generally <laughs> past that, past the knob because gotcha. there's so much. It's past the knob because it's uh, just just a tip. No. <laughs> there's so much wind around that area. I, I don't camp around. Do you there. know what? Actually, what we had a few. Um, we had this knob <laughs> around that area when my dad and I were driving back in uh, years ago. I don't know when it was. We had this genuine knob, like playing games with us. This was oh, in coming road? into Kimber. So coming, we, we were coming west. Yeah. So we're on the east side of Kimber coming in. And uh, he, he was like mucking around with us on the road, like sped up past us, slowed down, made us go back around, came back around at like at speed filming us. What? And then like, and we were all, like, I was just sitting there like, this is weird. Like I, I, I thought someone was going to be waiting for us sort of, 10, 20 k's down the road. Like, it's just it's yeah. creeped out by it. So, it's funny that that's the area. I had a, another one on the Nullarbor. I, I can get a bit... Um, like, my, my first night... The first night blues that I get when I'm camping, like, my mind, I think, goes a bit sometimes and in, in some areas. One one time, not far uh, east of Brookton. Because they're not too far away from Perth. Yeah, yeah. I was camping by myself, and it was when I had the um, hard shell canopy, like the fiberglass canopy... And I put a mattress in the back so I could shut the top of the canopy and have a mattress in the tub and my feet were sticking out. So like I'd just like I'd just be like knees down out the back. 
And I, re- I remember pulling up to this spot just behind like this little pine plantation thing. And uh, it was a nice little spot, like a little roadside 24 hour one. Yeah. And you could pull around and get off the road and that and all good. And I got it. I got out to just set everything up because it was late at night and I was pulling up just to sleep. And there was just one thong, like one kid's thong, like shoe on the road, <laughs> uh, on the like on the dirt track that I was camping on. Yeah. And I was like, where's the other one? <laughs> and then I was like, where's, where's the person that was wearing these? Like, <laughs> I, I, mo- I literally moved 100 metres down the road. I just oh. didn't want to sleep on top of that thong. <laughs> yeah. well, at the same time, probably 100 k's away from you, there's a kid crying. Where's my thong? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mum and dad are angry with her. It's <clears> yeah. yeah. so like little girls, like, yeah. Um, now I don't want to say thong, but <laughs> <laughs> little girls like happy yeah. thing. Yeah. Flip-flop. 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 Jandal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Jandal. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I've had, I, I've had a few weird. little campsites that I felt uneasy. Yeah, yeah. one one of yours actually. I go. I, I feel like I've spoken this whole whole. Thing. Sorry, <laughs> no, you're right. but another one's a funny one. Podcast on the, mate, Keep on the going. Nullarbor, and um, <laughs> this is my dad and I again. It might have been that night. We've we've it probably was that night actually. We've pulled into we've pulled up late, like midnight sort of time. We punched we punched out from sort of central New South Wales to Perth overnight. So yeah. we did it in two days, and um. Anyway, we pulled up to this campsite and as we're pulling around, it's pitch black, obviously. The lights are coming around, the lights are coming around. We can't see anything. And then all of a sudden, there's like this, there's a big tree with a head just sticking outside it, Ugh. but staring at us. <laughs> and I, it, like, I, my heart just sank for a second because I was just like, you couldn't see a car. So it was different. We could see the person, but we couldn't see like the car or anything. And then as we drove a little bit further in, there was a tent and his car was behind it and stuff. But all we could see at the start was just his head. Oh, yeah. I was, just sh- I was <laughs> shitting myself He was at probably the start. having a piss at the tree. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I think he was just same thing, checking who's coming into the campsite, yeah. like what's going on. It was a, like, we were the people rocking up at 12, 1 a.m. <laughs> so like, you can understand why. But I remember that just heart sank for a second. It was an eventful night now I think of it. But um, that I still, I'll never forget it. Just this head popped out around this tree staring down at us. I was just like, oh, <laughs> that'd be creepy. It was a bit weird. It, it doesn't was, sound that creepy talking about it now, but it was, it, at the time I was... Everything's weird. creepier at night. When you're in the moment and, and you're there, you know, it's, it, yeah, well, it, your mind wanders. You almost think you're going to be alone out there though. So that's where well, I was Well, you like, pretty much are. Yeah. Like I was so shocked actually, like there's a head, like what is another head doing? <laughs> yeah. But anyway. At least it was attached to a body. No so. harm. Yeah, it was. <laughs> and he was just camping there like we were. So. Yeah, geez. Stuck off a tree, just oh, a head. Man. No body. <laughs> yeah, just a pitchfork through it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. You would never a, leave fast enough, eh? Uh, I would have been, I would have been back to Perth in a day. Yeah. There's a lot, of, a lot of weird people uh, across the... There's a lot of weird things, a lot of weird people across the Nullarbor. Yeah. Um, so N- Nina was, uh, was, I told Jono about a story. So I heard this through Jono. So she pulled up somewhere to camp. And so she was up in the rooftop with her son, with her son Teddy. And someone pulled in that night and was wandering around her car, she reckons, around a troopy. No. And the next morning when she got up, Whoever was there has stolen her shoes. Really? Had stolen her shoes. Wow. Yeah, stolen her jandals. Yeah. On the, on the nullable. <laughs> yeah, on the nullable. Just oh, had one of those pulling bays. Just wandered around the car and then took shoes took off. Jeez. I mean, like, like, thank God it was only the shoes. Yeah. Could have been, could have been a yeah. lot worse, I guess. Wasn't there... Was Jono telling us a story as well of... Did someone get, like... <laughs> This is going to be very far-fetched. Someone got taken in their, like, in their camper. Like, the keys were left in the ignition oh, and they started the car and that, took off yeah, with the people that camping. Was, we were talking about that at the Perth World Drive Show, the gold mines up in Kalgoorlie, oh, Boulder. Was that it? Nah, that wasn't, but that's creepy too. That's yeah. a different story, but I know what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, I can't remember. Oh, who, no, was it? No, was I it? I feel like it was... I think it might have been that Wasn't one. there two... There were two, yeah, right? Yeah. Like that was, yeah. West Oz Prospector. Yeah, yeah. Anthony, yeah. West Oz Prospector was telling us his story. <clears throat> yeah, maybe it was that then. Yeah. yeah. That's a, that was a real creepy Can story. Of, who asked that question 10 uh, minutes ago? Travis. <laughs> Travis. That's Thanks, a, Travis. Can of worms there, Travis. That was about half an hour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll invite Travis in for another, yeah. <laughs> another chat. <laughs> I've actually got a really good one, but we'll save this for another time. Right. Yeah. yeah. No, good. we can, we'll tell it on Patreon. Yep. All oh, right. Yeah. Anyway, that's uh, that's everything we got. We'll, oh, cool. Because um, that took so long to answer the one question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, 
We'll save the uh, others for next time. Yeah, beautiful. I Sounds love it. Good. Keep sending them in, guys. Yeah. We love these questions. They're so, so good. Yep. Especially those ones. The interaction. Send it. Anything that makes us talk about that kind of stuff is, is great. Gets us going. Yeah. Send them in. All right. Let's wrap it up then, eh? Wrapping up the electrical episode. Sorry. <laughs> wrapping, <I'm cut> <laughs> he's wrapping it. <laughs> Four Drive Podcast, driven by Shelter, Southern River Band. Let it ride. See us out. You know where to find us. Four Drive Podcast on Instagram. All of our episodes on Backchat over at YouTube. And thank you again to our Patreons. You want to spell smoke? <laughs>